a story that haunts me is about two days before the inauguration, I was on a plane. Um, it was the Trump plane. And there were four people in the cabin. There was the president-elect of the United States, Hope Hicks, my then wife, and me. And we're just sitting, like, I was sitting about this far from the president-elect, and he asked me this question. He goes, should I fire the U.S. attorney of the Southern District of New York, replace him, who is pre Barra? And my answer was, well, I mean, generally speaking, it's better to have your people in positions of power than not. I mean, I just was giving just a generic answer. But you want people who are going to be, you know, if, if, you, if you have some kind of a priority, um, and, and I'm thinking here of a prosecutorial priority of, of, of some sort, like a legitimate one, I guess, you know, it would be, it would be better to have your own person in there, although I didn't elaborate on this. I mean, the, the practice is mixed on whether or not people stay on from administration to administration in the U.S. Attorney's Office. And there's a special kind of aspect to the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Southern District of New York is that it considers itself kind of independent of everybody and independent of the Justice Department. They, the joke in the Justice Department I learned when I was um, contemplating going into the Justice Department in 2017 was they call it the Sovereign District of New York. Mm -hmm. But that said, I mean, it, there, there have been lots of circumstances where new presidents replace U.S. attorneys, not because they think they're going to be charged in any particular district. But in this case, years later, I realized this guy had something on his mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why did he care so much about that, about that district? Other, you know, it wasn't just, you know, hometown. Did he fire Preet? Yeah. I forgot about that. He did. The first Ooh. podcast, one of the first podcasts I ever did was with Preet. Did you tell him that story? Absolutely, I did. Oh, yeah. Uh, was he mad at you? No. No. <laughs> well, I, mean, he un I mean, he understood why I said what I said. I'm yeah. just like, you know, I, I didn't say he should fire him. Sure. I just said all of the things, you know, I, I, I did it the way the economists do, ceteris paribus. I said all of the things being equal. Yeah. Yeah, you'd all of the things being equal, you'd rather have, have your own person somewhere important. I would spend the rest of I mean, the time talking about just what else happened on that plane. Uh, I don't. That's the only thing I remember. Yeah. That's the only thing I remember. Hmm. The only other thing I remember, I mean, the rest of it was just, I, I don't know whether there was much talking. I remember, you know, taking a selfie and, you know, the kind of things that you do when you're riding on, you know, a big 757 with a guy who's about to be sworn in as president of the United States. Yeah, I don't know. That's never happened to me. No, um, no I don't think it's going to no happen. No one invites me on their private It's planes. never going to happen to me again. Yeah. <laughs> um, that was unique.